We're, we're going to just go kind of go ahead and jump into it already okay. so we can kind of get the conversation going. Um, all right. Well, corre se va. Hello, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Health Yes here at Cameron County Public Health, where we talk about all things public health and more. My name is Javier Chavarria, and I'll be your host today here at Cameron County. Joining us today is... Cristian Martinez. And... Aurora Céspedes Madrigal. Uh, can you tell, guess, tell us a little bit about yourselves, uh, what you guys do here at Cameron County Public Health? Ladies first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm a registered dietitian. Uh, I've been working for, the, for WIC. Um, I started in 2008. So I've been uh, counseling mothers, um, well, ever since I started right with WIC. And uh, where I used to work, uh, there was a lot of uh, mm -hmm. variety in terms of topics to, to discuss. But um, mm -hmm. so we, we've had a lot, a lot of exposure with, with, with children and, mm -hmm. and common topics that moms uh, are concerned about. Uh, Javi, thank you very much for inviting us. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Christian Martinez and um, I'm a nutrition counselor and also I'm the um, quality assurance coordinator for the WIC program here in the Camaro County. Um, I've been working with WIC for three years already. Um, I got graduated. I, I've been in nutrition uh, field since 2010. Mm -hmm. um, I got graduated in Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico. And um, I've been here in Brownsville for five years, actually. One of the things that we're here to talk about today is uh, primarily nutrition for children and, and educating and some of the challenges that we deal with. A very common issue that we have with children are, are picky eaters. Would you say that that's a very common thing that we that we have to deal with? Uh, actually, maybe one third of parents mention during counseling that they are dealing with picky eaters. Um, I will say maybe that 50% of the population is of the kids is dealing with some preferences, different pre preferences. I myself don't have kids, but but I, I, I see it. <laughs> I see it a lot of times. You know, you go to like HEB or a local store, grocery store, and you see the kids tagging along with their parents, and like you know, the parents are trying to make all these healthy decisions, but the kids they want you know they want candies, they want all these things. You know, how do you manage your your child's diet while while also making it you know interesting for them to eat? Well, um, you know what I I like to mention to parents that. Picky eater. Actually, I don't like the concept of picky eaters. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a mistake to call it like that. I like to call it like preferences. Um, a picky eater is not about about the food. Actually, it's about habits, um, relationship with food, the timing, the environment, the parenting style. I mean, um, how it's presented to right. the child as well. Um, and it's funny you mentioned that uh, uh, the grocery stores that the kids are always going to be uh, putting in their preferences is mm -hmm. in the cards. And I guess one way I dealt with my kids is uh, establishing a day where they're allowed to pick whatever they want. And the mm -hmm. other days that, I mean, no, it's 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 Monday today. No, we can't have that. No. Right, right. Um, and they knew like, OK, Fridays, Fridays, we go to this, we'll stop at the stripes and you get whatever you want. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> right now in these times we have too many options in stores mm -hmm. um there's a bunch of different food and that's actually one of the the issues that when we go to groceries there's many products that says healthy mm -hmm. but if, if if we don't read the the labels the ingredients um we don't realize that those healthy quote-unquote um, products are mm -hmm. not that healthy yeah, because there, there's even things that say like either no sugar or or sugar free, but they still have like uh, artificial sweeteners in it too that we don't see because they're not advertised on it either. Mm -hmm. So it, it it is very important to like read the labels, uh, make sure that we're getting you know our kids and ourselves even um, things that are that are not as high in, in sugars uh, as other healthy foods, because a lot of times the unhealthy options are a lot cheaper too, at least that I've seen. You know, you, you go to a restaurant and like a value meal is like a lot more uh, cheaper than like something else. But it's like you know, it comes with more and like that's what the kid wants um, and not so much the, the healthier alternative, which sometimes can be a little pricey. I mean, if you budget yourself, um, if you plan your meal, the thing is planning. Mm -hmm. Like you need to be more disciplined and and plan your meals so you can establish like okay, your grocery list so you don't spend more than when you're 
supposed to. Mm -hmm. And if you grab all your ingredients for your meal and you feed a people, uh, I mean, a family of, let's say, six, mm -hmm. it would be more cost effective mm. than taking my kids out to a restaurant. I mean, when we go to a restaurant, I mean, we're a family of five, uh, minimum $80 we're going to spend mm -hmm. uh, minimum. For, a yeah. for a family of five. Yeah. Um, especially, I mean, the drink, sometimes I tell the kids, you better get water because <laughs> <laughs> right, <yes. laughs> the drinks are like <laughs> something sick. that um, I like to mention always to uh, during counseling is that every time that they go to buy groceries, make sure they don't go without eating before right because if you are hungry and your kids are hungry during um during the shopping mm -hmm. um it's gonna be very common to buy anything that you or your ch children are gonna be craving oh yeah and usually those are not the healthiest mm -hmm. options so what would you say are some are some effective strategies that 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 you can suggest for parents for healthy eating habits for kids one of the things that i see a lot and i've seen in during um, counseling with mothers is they're by the time they come with me the, the child is already very selective mm -hmm. in, in what they want to be eating and a lot of the times i've seen moms make the mistake where they prepare a family meal the child doesn't want it or he doesn't like that food let's say i make um I don't know, let's say uh, fideo con pollo. Mm -hmm. um, how do you say that in English? Fideo. <laughs> <laughs> like a chicken soup. Fideo, yeah. Like a chicken soup with, uh, with the little the pasta, like right? Pasta, little, yeah. um, so let's say the child doesn't want that. Mm -hmm. um, the mom would replace that meal and give them, um, okay, chicken nuggets mm -hmm. or fries. And I, I'm, I've had patients where the child only eats McDonald's chicken nuggets mm -hmm. and the mom would buy that every day for the child because that's the only thing he would eat. And mm -hmm. well, the mom the mom is concerned that he wants his child to eat, so he she'd rather give that food. So the child already knows, well, I'm not going to eat this food. Mm -hmm. My mom's still going to buy me whatever I want. No, I, I had a, a friend growing up in uh, middle school and high school who... Like quite literally, almost all of his meals were like McDonald's, and I'm just like, I'm like, how do you do it, man? Like, <laughs> I, my me myself and my family, we're 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 not you know we're not the most well off, but it's like it's like how do you how do you find the time and money to to go and do this like almost every day? Yes, uh, it, it's amazing to see uh, families and some people do that. What are some common things that you guys see? Because I I've heard you guys talk about the counseling. What what are some of the common things that you guys see during your counseling sessions well right now speaking about fast food mm -hmm. <laughs> um i have a story from one of my last counseling um i had this mom that was telling me actually we were talking about picky eaters and uh, she had like i think two or three kids and the little one said mom i want to go to mcdonald's mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and i was just stayed quiet and i was trying to continue with that counseling and the kid was continuing continue saying the same and mom was like right now right now we cannot go right now but later mom later later mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, i don't know if, if um if this is something you guys have noticed or not but uh, i know back in the day at, at least for me growing up uh, in my childhood um fast food restaurants would always introduce like with their kids meals and stuff there would always be like toys and stuff uh, i don't know if that was something that encouraged kids to want to go to the fast food restaurant a lot more or or like i don't because i feel like i don't see that as often uh so i don't know if the if the incentive for for a person to crave fast food is more prevalent now than it has been in the past i don't know if, it's, if that's anything you guys have noticed before uh or lately or not well now i feel like there's the fast food any everywhere you turn and in every each corner, corner yeah, yeah. And, and it's also like Like, uh, like you can get it through your phone too like ordering things online your access before you yeah. would have to you know everyone hop in the car go go to the fast food the nearest fast food place now so you can get everything delivered to you it's like it's, yes. it's a lot easier now yeah i don't know so much about the appeal like what is the appeal why the children want mm -hmm. that um i don't really think it's much of the toy because the no, toys right. have I mean, I remember when I was little, they used to give really cool toys. 
<laughs> they used to have like the little Barbie collections. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I used to collect like, little like, oh. like Pokemon. They, they used, used to go all used out. Used to with go those to McDonald's too. every yeah. every week <laughs> just to buy the toys. <laughs> But now I feel like the kids don't really pay much attention to the toy. No. Um, and and I plus, know. I feel like a lot of a lot of these restaurants nowadays don't don't really market themselves that way to, towards kids anymore. I mean, you you look at a a McDonald's or a Burger King nowadays, and like it almost looks like the color has been like sapped out of it. Everything looks gray and dull. And so like, I don't I don't know if that that appeal has died or not, or, or if that's a common thing. Maybe that's something that we. We might want to like check out at some point mm-hmm. if that statistic maybe maybe uh factors in but um so, uh, and something that um, i mentioned in the beginning that picky eaters is not about the food mm-hmm. um it's because presentation I, too uh, it's because of the presentation it's mm-hmm. because kids are in a learning process right so even if for us maybe eating is super easy right mm-hmm. something we don't realize what we put in our mouth for kids, it's totally different, and mm-hmm. we as an adults, we don't realize that. Right. And kids are in a learning process, and we as a parents, we need to set the example. So obviously, if the kids are watching that, it's very easy, very mm-hmm. convenient for mom and dad to stop in the corner, to stop in any f- drive through right. uh, definitely they're going to learn that mm-hmm. behavior, and they're going to start craving more McDonald's instead of the beans at home <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and and i guess I, I i bring that up because that that, that does come down to that pre- that topic of like presentation that like presentation is key to to get a child's attention or, or a customer's attention to come to your to your establishment to to eat the unhealthy food or not um so i guess that's why i was curious about that so and in talking about presentations what what are some strategies that we can implement to to kind of encourage our kids to like eat healthier or prepare healthier foods so uh, kids are also like um their attention is easily mm-hmm. uh attractive with toys i mean tv uh, now there's so much screen uh, mm-hmm. that they can watch uh get the child more interested in in the mm-hmm. meal time so make meal making meal times fun the, the mm-hmm. mother is gonna be in charge of what foods to offer uh, at what time? I mean, you put them on a schedule. Mm-hmm. At what time? Try to make it at the same time every day. Uh, but the foods that are being offered, if the child is not really, I mean, meal times, food, it's it's not like a fun time for the child. So we need to make it fun for the child so we mm-hmm. can play games with the food. I've asked them, like, do little figurines, do a happy face, do a little house mm-hmm. or um, something for the, the child can be paying attention to the food instead of. Um, right other things make sure phones are off tv is off any toys laying around mm-hmm. that might easily any distract the child right yeah so have the child pay more attention to the food even if he doesn't want to eat the food you don't want to have your child for- force feed your child right um that can make the selectiveness uh, even worse mm-hmm. um like the old school right old school. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where you had to eat everything on mm-hmm. your plate yeah and so, um Right now, Aurora is touching a, a very interesting topic because I don't know if you remember that a, a lot of kids like to play, quote unquote, with the food, right? right? And parents used to say, like, hey, don't play with don't your play food, with your and, food yeah. and eat it right now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but we are not realizing about we are uh, stopping the creativity of, mm-hmm. of, of these kids. And they are giving us a cue of what they want. So right, they right. want something more attractive, more colorful, mm-hmm. right? So when they are playing with the food, it's not because they don't want to eat. Maybe they just want to have fun yeah, they while, want that engagement while eating. Too. Yeah. Yes. And also, like, make sure on the plate you have a mm-hmm. variety of options for the child. So um, if you go into, let's say, like... Um, myplate.gov mm-hmm. um, they have an example of what the plate should be looking at uh, looking like so you have like your vegetables your meat your starches your mm-hmm. uh, dairy uh, the fruit so you have all these options for the t- and very colorful options as well um, so the child out of let's say five different food groups that you're mm-hmm. offering and maybe he'll get one or two um i've had moms where they don't put vegetables on the plate because the child starts crying and he doesn't want it he doesn't want it on the plate so i mean you still offer it Mm -hmm. you don't 
again you don't force him to eat the vegetables um but i mean he can play around with it you can name call instead of calling carrots uh mm-hmm. you can magic wands or mm-hmm. uh, instead the, of a broccoli the little trees the instead little of broccoli trees. so these little little terminologies that you can kind of uh introduce to them to kind of you know so they're, fr- they're a lot more familiar with the foods that they're interacting with too i think that's very important as well my kid uh one of, one of my kids he liked uh he was all into hulk so we mm-hmm. would tell him Oh, if you eat the green ones, mm-hmm. you'll get like Hulk, strong and <laughs> green like Hulk. Or like so. Popeye. I don't know. I don't know if you Popeye, know Popeye with spinach. Popeye yeah, with yeah. Spinach. And that Ma- make relations that yeah. the kid can find attractive for him. That's for something them. that I've always thought, and, and even, even till even even till today, like uh, I still associate spinach with Popeye. Uh, so I, I I think that's cool too. When you, when you can you can find fun ways to to make make foods interesting for kids yes. and more appealing yeah. as yes. well yeah so forest feeding is not the best option i mean um maybe we can make it more attractive for the child uh combining it with something that they like let's say mm-hmm. they like cheese mm-hmm. uh, well you can add some cheese on top of whatever food you want to introduce right. or and again parents need to be very patient um because i mean the first time you try it it's more than likely it's not gonna happen right um but i mean you keep on trying maybe you can try a couple of days after a couple of days a child doesn't want doesn't want to try it at all Mm -hmm. you can you know give it a pause for maybe a week or two and then try again Mm -hmm. um and the thing is the parents also need to be eating those vegetables oh yeah Yeah, set the example Um, yeah set the example monkey see monkey do thing you know yeah well if they're not eating it well why should i eat it you know yes yeah and everybody eating the same foods Mm -hmm. um that um would help as well something that is very important as well is uh the expectations that parents have for for the kids right. because sometimes they serve the same amount to the kids that they are eating mm-hmm. and they are setting a big expectation for that little tummy um so kids are obviously are gonna eat much less mm-hmm. amount of food so if they see a big plate on on front of them automatically they're gonna say like no no thank you okay. um some there's there's different types of picky eaters um some kids doesn't like the, the food mixed right mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. If, if we serve maybe picadillo as soon as they see the plate they're gonna say no thank you but what about if we put a little bit of meat on the side and then a little bit of tomato mm-hmm. um chopped on the other side right and um rice maybe right, uh, right. beans uh, on the other side so separately yeah there, there was some times where, where like my my parents would make like isals and stuff yeah where like uh though for the longest time i, I didn't know that there was actually like some vegetables included in, into that too so you know may, maybe there's also little strategies also to like kind of like not you know not so much sneak food or hide food on it but but make it so that you know we eat with our eyes a lot of times. So yeah. a lot of times, we the moment we see the thing that we, we immediately makes us go, I don't want to touch that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We automatically do not want to touch it either. So maybe there's some little strategies that we can kind of implement to, to kind of like, you know, introduce foods into them and then just kind of be like, hey, did you know this had in it? This The reason it tastes so yummy is because it's got bell peppers in it. It's got onions in it. Correct. Yeah, you can try hiding it. I mm-hmm. mean, I would still encourage to still put like a serving where the child can visibly see right, the right. vegetables. But you can also hide them in, like in the rice or the meats, um, mm-hmm. the veggies. If you're having if you're having problems with your child eating vegetables. Mm-hmm. Another type of picky eaters as well is uh, those kids that are not very hungry, but they want to be snacking during the whole day. Right. Um, that is very common during counseling and parents are worried about it uh i wouldn't be worrying mm-hmm. um i just want to make sure as a parent to offer healthy snacks instead right so right. you as a parent you you have the power the decision what to buy during while while you're doing your groceries right mm-hmm. So obviously, if you buy cookies, if you buy cheap potatoes, mm-hmm. um, when these kids want, want want to be snacking, obviously they're gonna prefer right, uh, right. those type of snacks, right? But um, but if I buy a lot of fruits, mm-hmm. uh, hickam up, cucumber, 
uh, we have another options that can be snack healthy and the, ch- the child is gonna be eating maybe the whole day but right. they're gonna be uh, and you know what kids also like to be empowered sometimes mm-hmm. so what aurora was mentioned um, also that we can give options to the kids what do you want to buy mm-hmm. during the groceries obviously in the um fruits and vegetables area <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> uh and and make them ch- choose one two new um food that they, they want to try mm-hmm. um, you are giving power to the kid they are feeling power mm-hmm. they huh. are gonna be more able to try those food and also at home mm-hmm. we can give options if i know that my kid is not gonna eat something that i'm planning to prepare i can give them options but those options those don't give too many (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe only two options and um, you as a parent you want to be agree with those two options right so Mm -hmm. what do you want to eat spaghetti with meatballs or chicken soup right right Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. both of them are gonna be um they're gonna have healthy uh, options on Mm -hmm. the plate right but the kid is gonna choose what to eat and they're gonna feel empowered like okay mom did something for me because i told her yeah i guess guess that's 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 the thing is like you know i chose to eat this versus like oh i have to eat this yes correct right Mm -hmm. right. uh what 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 are some um i guess some frequently asked questions that you guys receive uh, at your counseling sessions that that are pretty common that you guys get asked I've had where moms are concerned that the child won't eat the meats, actually, mm-hmm. maybe because of the texture. Or I explain like sometimes it's too much chewing, like a certain textures a child would refuse. Right. Um, but I mean, protein sources is also peanut butter, uh, beans, mm-hmm. eggs. So that, that's interesting. That I, I've, I don't think I've actually heard that too much. And kids don't need too much protein in the mm-hmm. day. I mean, if you look at uh, for ch- uh, smaller kids, maybe like three ounces a day, uh, two, three ounces. Um, it's not much protein that they need um, in the day. But I mean, w- once we review the the or, or the mom looks back and see, well, he, they do eat egg and they mm-hmm. do eat like their beans and they do like peanut butter. So. Uh, I feel like a lot of the times they are meeting their their right. goal with with the nutrients. I wanted to touch also uh, when Kristen was mentioning about the snacks. A lot of majority of the kids get their energy through the snacks, so mm-hmm. um, it's important to again keep them on a on a schedule. You don't want to give them a snack um, like an hour before a meal because mm-hmm. then that's I mean they're not gonna have an appetite for it. So it's uh, kind of like in school, they have their lunch time and their snack time. And snacks are fun. I mean, you right. just grab it and go and you continue to play. Yeah. <laughs> and so kids like to snack. Um, right, right. So that won't be a problem. We, we just need to make sure we have the right snacks at the home, which the parents yes. control. Right. Um, so once we open the pantry, um, well, yeah, cause you, hopefully you also there's... don't always know like what what kids are, are eating at school either sometimes they're supposed to follow <laughs> i mean yeah i mean yeah there, there's there, there's <laughs> days, but it's like to. But, but like you mean like when they're selling stuff yeah because yeah. i i know i know uh, at least for me like uh, middle schools and high schools that there, there would always be like you know you have your cafeteria foods mm-hmm. but then there would also be like people selling on the side like cookies chips and things like that uh, i remember i would always ask like my parents hey can i have a dollar yeah you know, yeah my little mm-hmm. allowance for the week so i can buy like you know pay a quarter to buy a cookie or something like that um or or even even things where like you know the friends can influence that too of like oh no well we're gonna go eat this instead of the instead of the cafeteria food i don't know if that if that has ever been an issue that's been brought up a lot of kids complain that the that the school food is not good Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why they don't eat it and that's why i had a mom that would pack a lunchable every Mm -hmm. day and that was a child's meal every day i mean Lunchables are okay, but not every day. No, yeah. yeah, but there's another type of uh, <laughs> yeah. pickiers as well. Um, yeah. Some kids uh, they want to eat the same food every day for every meal, mm-hmm. and also it's normal. It's totally normal for kids. Um, and sometimes maybe they're gonna love spaghetti, and the next day they're gonna say, mm-hmm. "No, I don't like it anymore." Mm-hmm. So would um, you say that that it's it's um to kind of put parents at ease a little bit you know trust your schools that they're following their 
their health plans. I mean, I don't know about the taste. I remember yeah. when I was in school, I I loved the cafeteria. Oh yeah, food, me too. Right? It was uh-huh. so good. I don't know what's going on these days that kids don't like school food. Mm-hmm. Even the breakfasts were really good. Yeah. So I, I don't know what what the deal is with with <laughs> I school. Know. I didn't nowadays. experience that. Yeah. No, I was in Mexico, so I used to have my burrito, <laughs> my sandwich with eggs. And and I guess that's another thing that you know, if, depending like, on like where culture? you're coming from, yeah, yeah the, the culture, culture too. Yeah. Um, especially here here in the valley we have a lot of people that 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 went to school in like mexico or people that went to school here in the, in the u.s yeah sometimes people are exposed to those different food environments too um meals provided for them or, or they have to provide their own meals for them too so i mean I, i've gone th- at school they have a day where you go and and you see, you eat with your child mm-hmm. um and so you can see what foods they're offering and i mean i feel it was Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know I never had a complaint with it either. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I um, I don't know. And 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 parents are also saying like that the school school food is not good. I mean, mm-hmm. or that they give them junk. Like like, well, I know they give pizza and that they give burgers and yeah. I I've never here. complained. I don't know. Yeah. Again, yeah. my grandma food was very good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to go back to this snacking part. Um, mm. Yeah, you don't want to give snacks to your child when it's very close to meal time. Mm-hmm. But uh, talking about again about empowering, uh, we can negotiate with the kid right. and, and make sure you tell them like, okay, you know what? It's only 20 more minutes. Um, I'm making food already. Give me 20 more minutes, and food is gonna be mm-hmm. ready, right? So wait a little bit. Um, Punishment, maybe we can touch base on, on punishment, right? Mm-hmm. So that many parents like to, because they want the kids to eat, right? Mm-hmm. So if, if you don't eat your whole plate, uh, you're not gonna go outside today or. Right, like yeah. discipline your kid because they don't finish their food. I grew up with the mentality of like, I have to finish everything on my plate, yep. regardless of whether or not I was feeling full or not. Uh, I think that's an issue some some people face too because not not everyone fills up the same. Yeah, you know we get we get full at different rates. Uh, some people can eat more than others, metabolisms and what have you. Um, yeah, and that is why I was talking about the expectations mm-hmm. with a kid because mm-hmm. um, if if your kid is telling the, telling you that he's full that he's not hungry, we need to respect that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And many parents are gonna say like yeah but here's not our restaurant so i'm not gonna cook for you later mm-hmm. uh, and you don't have to maybe you don't have to cook again something else or something different later but once again have right. healthy snacks mm-hmm. available so when that kid gets hungry he's gonna have options gotcha. healthy options Any, anything personal you guys might want to share personal stories of like Things that you've encountered uh, as as you've been counseling uh, parents. Um. Actually, I was a picky eater. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, we're talking about kids, but like you know, us as us, us as adults, I, I feel like we've also been picky eaters as well. I know I used to be a picky eater too. What what are what are some some uh, some foods that that you grew up not liking that you probably like now? Yeah, I remember. I- I always left behind my my vegetables, and I I, I have my mom struggled with me, <laughs> <laughs> and actually I didn't like it until I was an adult, mm-hmm. and it was because I started becoming interested in nutrition, and I started trying new things because I knew that it was healthy for me. Mm-hmm. So when I was maybe twenty twenty one. It was when I started eating um, vegetables or eating mm-hmm. better. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I feel as an adult, mm-hmm. you realize the need to to eat healthier, especially when you're having problems like high blood pressure or right, you start having right. like prediabetes. And as a, as an adult, you you realize the, the need. I mean, kids don't really maybe they're I mean, especially little young ones, they don't understand the nutritional need for it but right. for us adults i feel like we can comprehend better uh, i've had adults that 
don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though they have all these health problems, they still don't don't want to make. Or maybe they do want to make changes, but their lifestyle, um, because it's not about a, getting into a diet. We don't. I don't even like to use that word yeah. diet because yeah. people yeah. get scared with, yeah. with diet. Um, but just a way of eating. You just get. You need to get used to a new way of eating mm -hmm. um, because it's going to be better for your body. And, and once again, it's not about the food. It's about um, building a relationship, a good relationship with food. Mm -hmm. And that takes us again to the learning process. Mm -hmm. These kids need to learn how to eat, when to eat, what to eat. Right. Some kids are very cautious on what they have in, the, in their plate and they just need to see mom and dad to eat it first before right. try that food right so if they are not watching those vegetables on the table don't expect that that kid are, is gonna eat vegetables yeah. one day right when they're adults or when they're adults or absolutely you want to create good memorable fun experiences mm -hmm. during the meal times mm -hmm. so i mean um that I guess it's the foundation of how they're gonna be right. when when they're older. And I know um, sometimes it's frustrating as, as a parent, right? And uh, right now with with the pace that we're living and we're always busy, right? And there's very limited time um, at home enjoying with the family. Mm -hmm. But for the same reason, that limited time, you want to make it fun and memorable for your kids. And also make sure your child is active. Uh, physical activity also will help them. You know, you want to follow that schedule with the me three meal times and three snack, two to three snacks a day. Uh, physical activity can also contribute to that. So um, don't don't just let your child be at home and in, indoors. Mm -hmm. Like just. I, I remember when I was a child, my mom used to call me because I was outside all day and mm -hmm. now we need to call the kids because they don't want to go out. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, when we were children, we would go outside and play and with a ball and all the kids would go out. Oh, yeah, we struggled. We struggled getting kids inside. Now, yeah. and now, it's, now it's like, and now, like please get the out kids? there. <laughs> There's no kids in the street. There's well. no kids in the street. No. Um, <laughs> but yeah, definitely 60 minutes at least of physical activity, uh, sleeping well, that's something very important um, for kids it can also regulate your your appetite yeah. hormones so the, the, your sleeping pattern so yeah it's very important to get that, enough sleep gotcha, that's gotcha. another very interesting topic hormones <laughs> 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 and we can go on and on and on oh, with, with this topic <laughs> we, we we came in here thinking that, that we, we didn't have much to talk about and then we just keep finding little things to build off of so i, th I think it's this is definitely a conversation that we we can you know we can talk about for days um, yes. educating ourselves there's, there's always something new that we can incorporate into into you know building that interest and and you know introducing healthy foods healthy habits healthy lifestyles in in, in our child's uh, <laughs> way of living i guess mm -hmm. yeah Lifestyle. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, i'd like to thank you guys for for joining us today thank you aurora thank you uh christian for joining us thank you Kevin, um, for inviting us yes, aurora i don't know you, you want to say something uh on our resources for for yeah, where, 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 where can we guys where can we where can our listeners go to find more information about you guys or your services well in texaswick.org mm -hmm. you can find um like if you need to um, make an appointment or uh, there's a lot of resources for with classes uh articles uh handouts that the parents have access to mm -hmm. if they're having that case of picky eating um i have i mentioned before there's myplet.gov there's mm -hmm. eatright.org Cooking Matters is also another website where you can find a lot of information for picky eaters mm -hmm. Um, so there's a lot of options. I'm sure there's much more. Work. USDA yeah. also has a website, right, right, usdanutrition.gov right. yeah. has, has another. Um, and definitely what I will suggest is just uh, look for professional uh, resources, professional uh, people that can help you mm -hmm. to help your child <laughs> right uh, try to you now go for the neighbor <laughs> advice or the right. comadre advice right, right. So, you know oh i saw this on facebook it has to be true i yes. saw this on tiktok, TikTok yes yeah. and um 
I mean, TikTok sometimes I have <laughs> sometimes it, it really good recipes depend. for yeah. uh, how one of my kids, uh, one of my my patients, she was mm -hmm. a teenager, and, and and you know we had discussed about vegetables and trying new recipes with vegetables, and she came back with. This, all these TikTok recipes and oh, I tried this and I tried this mm -hmm. and, and speaking about recipes TikTok. just I will say to parents stop looking for the best recipe for my child to eat mm -hmm. and stop looking for recipes to build a good relationship with food gotcha gotcha Okay, well, on that note, I will say thank you guys for joining us uh, we, as we like to say on here um you know, stay safe, stay informed, stay educated. But I think we can we can change that to stay healthy, stay educated, but also um, stay engaged. You know, engage with your with your children okay. um, to help build that healthy eating habits. And uh, we'll see you guys again in, on the next episode. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.